please rise as today's invocation is offered by Colonel David C. Moran, Command Chaplain for the United States Army Europe. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, most glorious God, may we find peace in you as we pause from our busy days and routines to reflect on the history of this place. And Father, you understand naming, for you gave man that task at the very beginning, to name the animals, the creatures, the plants in the field. And we also understand the power of a name, and that in many religious traditions, you are not called by name, but by Lord. Blessed be your name. Heavenly Father, we look back in history on great names like General Lucius D. Clay, Colonel James Newman, General Shalikashvili, and we give thanks and praise for great works that have been done in the past by these great human beings. And Lord, as we name them and we reflect, may we go forward with pride, looking at the lives that they lived and the examples that they set, so that we too may make an impact on the world around us for peace and justice. Bless us now as we honor them and these places. In your holy name we pray, amen. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the host for today's ceremony, the commander of the United States Army Europe, Lieutenant General Mark Hurdling. Well, good morning, everyone. It is almost a sunny day here in Wiesbaden, but it will be the rest of the day. Consul General Alford, State Secretary Herr Weinmeister, Finance President and Frau Hammer Froman, Lord Mayor Mueller and Dr. Mueller, Mrs. Shalakashvili and Brent, thank you so much for coming. You've had a, a, a wonderful adventure over the last 48 hours, and thank you for finally arriving this morning. Dr. Lucius Clay III and Ms. Ketchum, distinguished guests, families, and friends. One year before our nation declared independence, our Army was born. Happy 237th birthday. United States Army. Thank you. And, and U.S. Army Europe has been a proud part of that history for over 70 years. Our birthday, by the way, was last Friday, June the 8th, so we're even a little bit older, at least uh, in that regard, than our Army. Um, over 70 years of experience, contrib contributions to collective security, and now, as we do theater security cooperation, the building of trust with our partners on the European continent. In those years, we've established the bonds of a community, a family, really, living and working together with our partners, especially our German partners, as the majority of U.S. Army in Europe has always been here in Germany, always building strong soldiers, and strong teams, as is our motto today. During those same 70 years, USER has changed several times. I was reminded of that by a few uh, retired colonels last night of what they experienced when they were here. But USER is a very different organization today than when I first reported here in 1975 as a new second lieutenant. 1975. All right, for those of you who are thinking, God, that guy is really old, you're right. <laughs> USER is also a very different organization than the one I left after my second tour in 1991, 21 years ago, after the wall came down. But none of those changes compare to what has happened within the last 10 years, and I mean that sincerely. Anyone who has not been assigned to U.S. Army Europe in the last 10 years and those who have not visited here since the end of the Cold War cannot claim to understand where we are today, what we do significantly, to significantly contribute to the security of the United States, or how truly strong we are with our allies shaping the security environment here in Europe and for the rest of the world. Ten years ago when I was Starting my, most, my next to most recent tour here in Europe, General B.B. Bell 
said, and I'm quoting him because I wrote it down on one of those green notebooks, we will transform all of the rest of USER from units, garrisons, processes, training, exercises, and we will know we have accomplished everything else when we start the very last mission, which is the move to Wiesbaden. When we put the headquarters in Wiesbaden, we'll know we are almost finished with our transformation. Well, today, with this ceremony, appropriately on our Army's birthday, we officially start the move to Wiesbaden. And Sue and I feel extremely lucky to be a part of it. I also feel very honored to be a part of the USER mission because there is no place on earth that Sue and I would rather be than right here today. And I have to tell you a quick story. Today, based on some consultation Lord Mayor Mueller and I had over a year ago, we will rename the Wiesbaden Army Airfield the Lucius Clay Cassern. The history and the actions of General Clay are truly inspirational. He helped transition Germany from being an enemy to being one of our closest friends and closest allies. While here, he helped create a free press in post-war Germany. He was the force behind the first post-World War II German university, the Free University of Berlin, where just a few months ago I had the opportunity of talking to students who were studying not only the German government, but the government of the European Union. He cr helped create the government which in fact became the Federal Republic of Germany. He was the driving force behind the Berlin Airlift and many of the planes that provided supplies to that besieged city in the latter parts of the 1940s took off from right over there. Even after he retired from the military, President Kennedy made him the special envoy to Berlin in 1961. And during the standoff at Checkpoint Charlie, he stood strong for the dignity of his fellow Americans, and just as importantly, the dignity of his German friends. Those were the toughest times of the Cold War. The Chancellor of West Germany at the time said General Clay drew the line like no other military leader between right and wrong. On his grave at West Point, <laughs> where I, I found out just last night he is buried between one fellow graduate who built the Panama Canal and another fellow graduate who piloted a spacecraft to the moon. The German people asked to place a plaque, which is unlike anything else in that sacred place, on his grave. It says, Wir danken dem Bewehr unserer Freiheit. I think it was Willie Brandt who said at his death, we who now bear responsibility in Berlin bow in gratitude before this man. Also on the recommendation of Lord Mayor Mueller, we will honor Colonel James Newman, the former military administrator of Hesse and a soldier who called Wiesbaden the center of the Hessen government. I think the Lord Mayor tried to convince me he actually said the center of the universe. <laughs> but we're going to honor him because in my view Wiesbaden is the center of the universe. Uh, we're going to honor him by naming a new, a new housing community after him in just a little while. Colonel Newman was revered in this city and in the state of Hesse for his calm demeanor, his charismatic personality, and his treatment of those who had been enemies, but which were quickly becoming friends. Then finally, if we haven't had enough by that point, 
in just a little while, we'll come back here and we will give a special honor to our first foreign-born chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, a Georgian, and I'm talking about the country, not the state, whose family immigrated to Poland, who saw his first U.S. soldier here in Germany when he was tearing apart a bridge as he had been ordered to do to stop the advance of the American army by the Germans in, the, in his home, in his place of birth. More to him in just a few minutes when we return, and I'll let his widow talk a little bit about him as well. Since 1989, the Army has reduced its presence in Germany, in Europe, actually, from a quarter million soldiers on 858 locations or sites to a projected 30,000 soldiers in seven remaining Army communities by, by 2015. USER has become an organization which is all muscle, no fat, and we partner with our European allies to build forces that fight above our weight class. We do that through training, exercises, exchanges, and most of all, by building trust. And trust can't be built overnight. That's a long-range proposal. You have to do that every single day. You can't rotate people to build trust. You have to be there to build trust. And that's why we're here today. The new USER headquarters here in Wiesbaden, here at Clay Cassern, is transformed. And even with fewer forces, we're as strong, and I would even say a little bit stronger, than we've ever been before. You're going to have to excuse me now and a few of my friends, uh, because we're going to leave for a few minutes. We would ask you to please enjoy yourself here while, while we're gone. Every once in a while, we'll be popping up on the TV screens from a bunch of different locations as we tear down banners, unveil uh, plaques, and name some things, as well as giving the first keys to a house to a young couple that's going to move into Newman Village. But we'll be back soon. So enjoy the music and the entertainment while we're gone. Thank you all very much for being here. Distinguished guests, this is Charlie Tashvili. All of you have joined us today. In particular, we'd like to thank uh, Ms. Ketchum and Dr. Clay, who are standing here to my left, who have honored us here with their presence. It is my privilege to dedicate this installation. The ground on which we stand has a rich and varied history, including the establishment of a Roman outpost in the 6th century AD, the knighting of Friedrich the first sons on these fields in 1184, the posting of the first German airmail letter in 1913, and as the home of the Luftwaffe's Ace of Spades fighter squadron in the 1930s. More recently, the Wiesbaden Army Airfield Complex has seen duty as the United States Air Force's Europe Headquarters, the 1st Armored Division Headquarters, and the U.S. Army 5th Corps Headquarters. And today, with the long-anticipated arrival of Headquarters U.S. Army Europe, we begin a new chapter. This latest chapter actually began on June 26, 1948 two days after the Soviets imposed the Berlin blockade. General Lucius Gubignon Clay gave the order for the initiation of the Berlin Air Lift. And as a result, the first aircraft of the lift took off from this airfield in Erbenheim. General Clay's bold act of support for the citizens of the Free Berlin was a defining moment in the forging of the friendship between the United States and Germany. Now, Lieutenant General Hurtling spoke volumes about General Clay's contributions, and there is more, and I will give you some more. Uh, during the early 1930s, General Clay spent four years in Washington, D.C., helping in America struggling with the Great Depression by organizing and managing New Deal public works projects for President Roosevelt. In later years, he was called upon by President Dwight D. Eisenhower 
to help forge the plan for financing the proposed interstate highway system that spans America. And in a very real sense, as Lieutenant General Herbert said, he was the father of a free West Germany. As military governor of the U.S. zone following World War II, he presided at the birth of West German Constitution with Adenauer, Heuss, and Schumacher. Furthermore, General Clay's detailed recommendation for the construction of post-war Germany served as a basis for the Marshall Plan. As a result, he is considered, along with Adenauer and Erhardt, by many historians, to be the architect of Germany's post-war Wirtschaftswunder, leading to the creation of a prosperous, stable, and democratic Germany. Not one to turn his back on friends, General Clay returned to Germany after his retirement to serve as President Kennedy's special advisor during the Berlin Crisis of 1961. And so today, we will dedicate this installation to the memory of this great man. And it is my honor to share this moment with his granddaughter, Ms. Kathleen Ketchum, who has traveled from Maryland to be with us, and his grandson, Dr. Lucius D. Clay III from Virginia. Now, I had the opportunity to eat dinner with these two wonderful people last night, and of note, Ms. Ketchum attended Nuremberg Elementary School and moved to Heidelberg and attended middle school at Mark Twain Village. She actually lives in Pat, lived in Patrick Henry Village, where my wife is moving out of today. And now uh, Miss Ketchum enjoys spending time with her grandson and adopted rescue dogs, and of all places, Germantown, Maryland. <laughs> Dr. Clay served as a first lieutenant in the United States Army in the early 70s, attended medical school at the University of Virginia, and is now an attending surgeon at the Center for Health in Lynchburg, Virginia. Ma'am, sir, I thank you both for joining us at this celebration. Please join me as we take our places and we will begin the unveiling and dedication. 